two, three. Let's go. Hey, welcome everybody back to Sustainiac. No S because it's just me today. Emma's on special assignment. She's on Mars. No, that's not true. But uh, she will be back on the next on the next episode. Don't you worry because I know you don't come tune in to listen to me. But you probably are tuning in to listen to my guest, uh, Joshua Linden, who I have spoken to several times on a previous podcast about the logistics of packaging and displays, et cetera. He's Joshua Linden, and he is sales account executive and employee owner, right, at Bay Cities Package and Design out on the West Coast, I believe. Is that right? That's correct. West Coast out of Pico Rivera, California. Oh, wow. Where is that? Where is that what is, is in Southern California? It's about 30, 40 minutes from Long Beach. Uh, oh. LA okay, cool. So you go to Captain Jack's out that way or anything? I don't know. Uh, not familiar with that, actually. Oh, all right. Well, we used to go there all the time when we, I, I had a, in a former life, we'd go out there. Um, uh, I had a terminal out that way um, in San Diego and then one right there in Los Angeles, uh, LTL stuff. Uh, but we got Captain Jack's, I think it's in Huntington beach or North Huntington beach, right on the water. It, sound, it sounds familiar. I actually lived in Huntington and Newport for a little while, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A while. crab legs, the size of Polish sausages, just unbelievably good stuff too. Well, that sounds but anyways, just about right. <laughs> yeah, it does sound about right, right. And a bill to boot that's that big as well too. So, <laughs> But uh, hey, tell us about yourself, Joshua, and and Bay Cities, uh, because what we're what we're doing here on Sustainiacs, and and I know you and I talked about this, and I'm so glad that you came on because we're trying to connect people, companies, and products, and, and the products and services, and consumers connect them right so that people understand who is green, who isn't green, what the challenges are that are out there, because there's plenty of companies that are as green as they can be, and. Till other people jump on board and can and 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 start doing part of their part as well. Not to blame one side or the other, but if everybody was doing a little bit and they're worst at doing a little bit, your life would be a lot easier getting recycled materials for your packaging and stuff, right? Exactly. You mean we want our boxes back? Yeah. <laughs> well, so I mean, that, you, you, kind of what it comes down to is, you know, we would like, our, yeah. you know, to continue the cycle of recycling. We would like our boxes back, please. Yeah, and so and and so that's what that's one of the things I talk about all the time, Joshua. Is that that is a that is a uh, it's a logistics type of thing. So tell people who's Bay City and why are you at Bay Cities? Yeah, so um, a little bit about Bay Cities. They've been around for over sixty five years um, in the manufacturing space of corrugated packaging um, and retail display. So over sixty five years ago, they started just making large size boxes um, from craft craft materials. Um, and printing on them, very simple, you know, one one to three color print, nothing fancy. Um, you know, now till today, we're we're doing very large scale campaigns, um, and you know, really leveraging you know the sustainability aspect of what we do as a as an industry, right? Like the, the goal is to obviously get you know these materials back so that we can continue to reuse them because they can be used up to seven times. You know, and put back. Wait, 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 wait. So a, a box, if it's just, if it's not like chopped up and stuff like that, is that you're talking about? Corrugated boxes can be used up to seven times. And why seven times? Is that like a is that is that because of like the NMFC and the packaging codes for what you're putting in it? Yeah. So I mean, so basically, as as it gets recycled, those fibers start to separate more and more. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they're yeah. not as strong. So basically, for our types of packaging, they will go that. Now we will ship. I got those materials elsewhere and they will use them for other types of, you know, but typically you can recycle them up to seven. I got you. So are, are you guys, so the the packaging and, and you guys do displays as well, right? And you design like in cap displays. Is all of it corrugated or you guys get into plastics at all? We do a little bit of both. I would say majority of what we want to be focused on is corrugated. Now, obviously brands and retailers have other expectations and we kind of mm -hmm. guide them to other sustainable options, even if it isn't the plastic substrates material. Yeah. Um, but again, it's kind of that balance, right? Because we still use yeah. tapes, um, you know, and there's still different components that have to be plastic. Now there yeah. are alternatives, but again, those those cost more money. And at the end of the day, we're serving our you know the suppliers and the retailers, and they have to make that final decision for themselves on how sustainable do they want to be. Um, and also, just depends mm -hmm. on the actual vehicle and where it's going. Because if it's going to a retail store, it's more likely to get recycled correctly because they have protocols and you know procedures for that. Now. 
it's the boxes that go to homes, you know, with the increase of e-commerce sales and things like that. Mm. A lot of these boxes are going to consumers. And so now they're having to be recycled at home. They may not have recycling. You know, there's a lot of different variables there, um, depending on where you live. So I think, you know, that's where the biggest challenge is, is really getting the materials back from consumers, not necessarily the retailers, because the retailers, they're, you know, they're held to a different standard. You know, they, they have sustainable initiatives and protocols. You know, someone like you and me, we don't necessarily may not have that, right? Like we may not have the same understanding or the same uh, education level to, you know, properly recycle certain things. And I think sometimes it can be a little confusing, even though it is just a box. Um, you know, a lot of like one thing like we always like to talk about is like the pizza box, right? Like a lot of people think that you can't recycle a pizza box, which you can. Um, and the, they're, well, know, they think there's it. food on it and the printing, right? And so they say, well, you can't do that. But you can is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Now, so, obviously, some recycling centers, again, it is a, that's where I think some of the things may be broken. Like some recycling centers may have different protocols and what they are willing to accept. Well, so and, and some of those it. recycling centers are, are run by companies that aren't necessarily recycling companies, right? I mean, they're packaging companies that run some of the, as you as we call MRFs, right? The, the material reclamation facilities. And they run those because then they get the contract to be able to get the paper and the cardboard out of those, right? Correct. Yeah, they're, they're not as, they're, they're incentivized differently. Yes, and so they're um, they're looking I, for. I don't want to go too like, far into that because that's not. Neither do I. <laughs> neither do I. I think that there's just a different um, incentivization to them to recycle different, right. um, and yeah. they may not go back to us. Like some right, sort of right. materials may not come back to us, so that's the other factor there as well. So, so, so you know, again, I think from our side of things, we have to be as sustainable as possible, and then adding that communication to the consumers of like what that means, right? So is it, you know, making sure they know how to add the how-to labels to their direct-to-consumer boxes, even their retail yeah, packages. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like adding those little steps is really going to help make sure that it gets to where it needs to go. Yeah, that and that's that's the that's the communication. We talk about that in in logistics, which is is my life is logistics. It's been for thirty five almost thirty five years now, but it, we always talk about communication and transparency as well. And that's kind of what is missing in in recycling because, like you said, people think that if it's a pizza box, it can't be recycled. Well, maybe in your town, but here's the thing: if you knew how much stuff could actually be recycled. If the infrastructure was there and the investment was there to recycle, you'd be pissed and you'd be screaming at people, why can't we recycle everything? Because it is recyclable if you have the right infrastructure to do it. And that's one of the things we're trying to get out to people. And also the fact that this, I love this. I'm going to read to you something and you may, you may, under, you may uh, recognize this. We understand the importance of sustainability. We pride ourselves on working with environmentally friendly products and continue to strive to create the best solutions for ourselves and our partners. That's you guys. I love that statement of purpose. And, and it's awesome because I mean, and, and I, I like, and I don't like the fact that it's kind of uh, understated with, with you guys because you're not out there and, and in people's faces, but it's kind of one of those things is when you don't have to be out there in, in people's faces and it gets done anyways, then we have arrived and we're doing something. Uh, but what, what does that, what kind of challenges that give you in your business to have that purpose? You talked about it a little bit when I asked you about plastics, but how, yeah. I mean, how I think it, you really have to look at it from a holistic approach, right? Like every, you know, sustainability is going to mean something different to everybody. Sure. You know? And I think that there's levels of sustainability. And I think that no matter what, as an organization, that's that's a for, at the forefront of our mind, right? Is making sure that we are not only able to, you know, maintain sustainable practices, but also continue to look at what we're doing to make sure we are doing those right things and doing better too, and then holding our partners accountable as well. Like, are the people that we're working with, you know, continuing to improve and looking for innovation and trying to find other ways? You know, it's like we're in that growth mode too. So it's like every company I think has the opportunity to do better, right? Even us, yeah. right? Like even Walmart, sure. even anyone, right? Like you just have to take the time to make it a focus. And I think for companies that make it a focus, it, it, it's, it's, in our, it's in our nature. So it doesn't, it's not as broadcasted, right? It's just because it's a part of who we are and what we do every single day. Yeah, so there's an organization called Pop 
which stands for uh, Plastic Ocean Project. And um, Bonnie Monteleon, my new good friend, uh, is executive director. And their motto is from May, May, Maya Angelou, which is uh, do better and, and then do better again, right? Which is you don't have to be perfect to start. Just do your best and then do again. I think one of the things that aggravates me the most is I see some of these, these greenwashing lawsuits and stuff. And they're obviously... Uh, people who are trying to do the right thing and then and then somebody gets pissed or decides somebody should be offended and therefore they sue them. And it's like, come on, we, they're doing the best that they can. There, there's obviously some issues and not everybody understands it. There's not, there's no uh, formal certification and that type of stuff, right? So it makes it difficult and I think it, it breaks things down. But you guys seem to be really into this and invested some pretty serious time and energy into your into your supply chain, at least for, for the corrugated cardboard and stuff like that. I look on your website and I start reading about all these things that you're doing. And I was so glad that you said that you would come on and I could book you because there's so many cool things that you guys are doing. The, it's, can, can you get dig into a little bit about some of that? Like, uh, I think it's New Indie and, and E-Core. They're like, are they... How do they? How do they go in? How, how, uh, yeah, the the name. Please uh, get that name right for me and for yeah, our viewers. So, <laughs> uh, so New Indie is basically where all of our packaging gets recycled, right? So you okay. recycle a box, the retailer recycles a box, that arrives to New Indie. They are going to okay. get that box in. They are going to do their process of breaking it down and actually turning it back into paper. So they're going to make the paper for us. And then once it's finished at New Windy, they actually use electric trucks um, to move that freight from one building over to Encore. So okay. Encore is literally right across the street and they've specifically made a, an alleyway so they can transport these, basically they're giant rolls of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like the, craft, like the craft paper, right? Correct. It's and they they move them like on their side and they grab them with like the side grabbers, right? They pick them up with the those. Correct. Like, I mean, these oh, things can yeah. crush a car like they're. Massive. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I've moved them before LTL, which is ridiculous because you really need to have like rollers on the floor of the truck <laughs> to do it right. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, they use these electric vehicles to move them from one point to the next. The great thing about Encore is it's actually powered by New Indies facility. From all the steam that comes off that plant, we power Encore. So that's how. Well, all can... right. So wait a minute. So, so it, New Indy receives all the used cardboards, right? Does it have to be your cardboard, or is it just specifically yours goes? It's there? just, it's just, it's just board. I got you. Okay. And so any any card comes into that plant, and they take, they bring it in. Could they take? Could they take pizza boxes? I think they take pizza boxes. That'd be cool. What if I, yeah, that. <laughs> I mean, have you been to a, a, a paper plant before? Yeah, uh, yes, and I've driven by a, a few paper plants that okay. I mean, you can tell, right? <laughs> it's a very unique smell. Um, oh, yes. Very unique is a good way to put it. Yes, very unique smell. <laughs> yeah, very unique smell. So things make it over to Encore. Encore is where they make all of our corrugated sheets. That's where you take the individual liners and glue them together. Um, now, that process is more sustainable, so we try to limit the amount of glue that is added to there, okay. and that's why it's so precise, but those will run. Then basically at the end of that machine, they'll, they'll cut it into whatever the sheet sizes is. Um, they are maximizing every inch of that. So there's rarely any waste off that main sheet. Yeah. Um, and they kind of plan that based on what, what's being run. And I mean, yeah. it's happening in fragments of a second, like they'll switch lines. I mean, they, there's no line down. It is constantly running. Yeah. Um, they just sort it out on the back end. So then, then that's where it comes to us, right? So we're they're in they're they're in Ontario. So they'll move those goods over to Pico Rivera, and that's where our sheet plant is. And so we'll take those sheets and convert our sheet converting plant, and so we'll convert those sheets into a box, into a display, into whatever it is our customer has requested at that point. Um, and then, depending on you know what the scope of that project is, we may either pack it out and fulfill it or ship the raw goods directly to the retailer or consumer um, just flat, and then they'll assemble that on whatever okay. that process looks like. But again, I think what's unique about us is we really try to streamline everything to lower the amount of footprint that we have from to, to and from. Um, so that's that's kind of the benefit of having that partnership, having those relationships um, with New Indy and on the board. So New India and Encore are separate businesses from you and from each other, right? 
but but the three are in partnership uh, to make this stuff happen. So, do other companies use New Indian Encore as well? There are other companies. That use okay, cool. I got you. I got you. So, New Indy actually runs a facility. They're taking the 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 and they're breaking it back down into the pulp and everything, and then creating the paper rolls, the big craft paper rolls, which is the right. brown like paper rolls, right? Yeah. And then. But from that process is producing a bunch of steam. That's the pulp process, right? Where they're boiling it down and stuff. And that steam actually runs Encore, who's turning it into corrugated boards. Yeah. That's amazing. That is really cool. Yeah. So it's recycling yeah. and they're, they're using their own stuff. That is very, very cool. It's, it's, it's kind of a part of the process. And again, it's like, I think it's about making those 1% changes every, every day, right? Like how can we be more sustainable? How can we make sure we're looking at each of those steps I mean, even when it comes down to printing, you know, it's going from, you know, looking at UV inks to water-based inks, right? I mean, it's it's every step of the process. Are yes. we so, so using let's electric talk. vehicles or gas vehicles? Are we using solar panels or not solar panels? Are, you know, how long are the lights on? Like all of those little, like what types of lights are we using? Like it, it, it really comes down to the granular. Yeah, and and you guys are you guys are measuring that stuff, and maybe this stuff is is updated since since I pulled this off of your website, but I stole it right off your website, and I'm going to show it right here, um, for everybody to see it because it's really it's really good stuff. So you guys talk about adhesives, water based inks, and like you were just talking about, and that type of stuff, and certifications, etc. But it says in here in 2021, Bay City's recycled 4,988 tons of paper. 21 tons of plastic, 13 tons of metal, uh, and that accounts for basically 84, almost 85,000 trees, mature trees, right? 20 million kilowatt hours of electricity, 2 million gallons of oil, 35 million gallons of water, and 17,000 cubic yards of landfill space that was prevented from being taken up. And I that's interesting to me because almost nobody lists the cubic yards of landfill space that they've saved. And that is important and it's a great measure. I love it. So where does all that stuff come from? Where I we get the get the trees because that's 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 your that's your paper, right? Yes. So where, where's where's the water and the and the electricity, the gallons of oil? Uh and you, you talk about um water as well, water-based inks and and it and I guess uh you know, adhesives. Yeah. And I mean, they, so I'm actually not a part of that process of doing the okay, evaluation gotcha. on the sustainability side. Right, 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 right. What I do know is that basically from all of the materials that we are actually like using and on the day to day, not only in our production plant, but in our pack out facilities as well, because you got to take that into consideration that this, we're not just a, a, you know, producing materials, like we're actually co-packing. So we'll bring in goods to our facilities. Gotcha. So they have a lot of dunnage. They have a lot of materials. Oh, yeah. So you got boxes and plastics and shrink wrap and banding and whatever else comes in through them. So like we, yeah. all that material gets into that as well on top of, you know, just, you know, us saving water or, you know, using less inks. Like we're always a, a, a evaluating that, um, you know, so we've invested heavily into like digital printing which is really good because one, the sustainability of that is kind of just the fact that you're not going to be, you know, you can go direct to print on a digital substrate. So instead of like printing a cutting die or, you know, even, you know, doing printing dies, we're printing directly to, to a board. I got so you. There, there's little things like that where we're, we're not having to produce those materials anymore because we're doing digital. So just reduce, that's part of the reduce, right? That you don't even... Like people don't understand that. I don't think they think about that enough of, of that being a big part of reduce, reuse, recycle, right? Reduce is a big thing <laughs> and it can be done, right? And, and like you talked about, it's also efficiency and it can be found all over the place. The distance from your recycling of the paper to your corrugated people, the, the vehicles that are being used. And you said the efficiency of the time of when those materials moved as well can be reduced, right? Correct. Yeah, so I think I think it really just comes down to, you know, wanting to do the best, you know, for 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 the, for the world and for you know obviously our company, but it's it's just taking those little steps, right, and evaluating that. But again, it's it's just. It's great stuff, and I mean, so you you're uh, you, I mean you're your sales account executive, right? 
And so how important have you found, let's change gears a little bit. I mean, I, you guys are sustainable and doing a great job that's out there. I'm not a certifier or anything like that, but you've got the certifications uh, from, uh, and I and I have those around. I don't have them on this sheet though, but so you got, you got I mean, you're certified with uh, the forestry, right? Net, forestry. We're SFI certified. We're part of the Sustainable Packaging Coalition um, and we're also FSC certified as well. Okay. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's awesome. So how important is that for your business cycle? Is it, is our, our customers coming to you because of that? Do they, do they make concessions because of that? And has that changed over your, 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 uh, lifetime as, uh, being in this business? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think I touched on it earlier, but I mean, I've been doing this for about eight years in this core mm -hmm. industry. Um, and before that I didn't have really anything to do with, packaging right. or anything like that. So this is this was all new to me eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that when we, when we can you actually repeat that question? <laughs> uh, so it was just how important is it to your customers, right? That you guys are are are, are green, right? How, how does that interplay with your sales and, and inquiries? And has that have you seen the role of it change over the, your eight years that you've you know, you've been in the in the business? Yeah, so the first thing is like yes they i mean companies come to us specifically because we do some of these sustainable practices the other thing is like they want brands want to make sure they're being sustainable mm -hmm. um and having those certifications make sure that they are um because it, i mean a lot of people don't talk about it but there are wrong ways to get packaging right i mean sure you know there are bad ways to go cut down trees like I mean, there, there are yeah. people out there that are doing bad things and making sure that you're certified and know that your your product isn't coming from there is really important um and you know with some of these certifications that they're actually not only cutting down a tree but planting seven more in its place so it's like some of those certifications are very important to make sure we're continuing to um you know replenish that's that stock sure. too because a part of the conversation I think is not always talked about is that we still need virgin board. You can't have recycled packaging without virgin board. So, <laughs> so at some great, point, great statement <laughs> it had to come from something. Right? Something that I think about is like you can't have recycled paper without new paper. No, so you can't. And that's what we talk about all the time is we're not against plastic at Ocean Plastic Technologies. We're against and trying to correct our irresponsible use of the virgin plastic we have to reduce the amount that we need in the future. We're not saying to get rid of plastic or get rid of using paper because, man, can you imagine how difficult this world would be? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's lots of different substrates. And I think it, it really just, you know, what is, there's a lot of, conversation about why certain substrates are more popular than others like hemp versus paper you know like there's a lot of history behind that so i think that you kind of just have to evaluate it on just you know what are we what are we doing today that is better for the environment like, are we taking the time to make sure we have a how-to on our box you know to make sure that it's recycled properly you know um is there other other education that we can offer our consumers um yeah you know, right like I think there are really good examples, like retail examples, um, of brands trying to make that one percent better, right? Like again, it's just about communication and education, um, at least from my perspective, <laughs> because oh, you're yeah, absolutely you know. right, it is. And you know, like what I thought was recyclable when I was younger is a lot different than what I thought is recyclable now, and how it's recycled and what you have to do to recycle it, because. You know, even growing up, like, I don't remember ever my parents recycling plastic bags. Sorry, mom and dad. But, but you know what I mean? Like, we reused yeah, them. I know exactly. But, like, I, I don't remember ever us taking them to, like, a Walmart and dropping them off. And, you know, it's like, how many families actually do that? And so it's just those little things and having the accessibility to it. Like, something that I like that Walmart's doing is if you go, they're, they're rolling this out now with, and I think it's with TerraCycle, where they're putting the bins out front. I thought it was genius because a couple of years back I had the idea myself. I was like, I wonder why they don't have these out front. I think it'd be really good because it's right. I mean, it's one of the largest retailers in the world and they already recycle themselves, right? They're, they're really good. Yeah. Yes. Now, Absolutely. helping the consumers do that, I think that's huge. And I think more, it's not just talking about it. They're actually being about it. At least that's my opinion. You know, Maybe it's because I'm here locally in Bentonville. Like, I get to see it firsthand. Um, but I think there's, there's other brands out there. There's other retailers out there that aren't doing those things. 
at least from my perspective. No, there are there, you're you're absolutely right, and maybe they they step back because they don't think they can, they can do enough, or they think that maybe if it's not perfect, it's not going to work, or whatever it happens to be. It, and that's it doesn't have to be perfect for it to to make things or to to make a huge impact if we all do something a little bit. And you know, you you said education uh, uh right and 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 really advertising what you're doing letting people know education is is incredibly important in this right like you said putting the instructions on those boxes of exactly what to do right making it as convenient as possible is one of those issues as well and that's why i applaud like you said the what walmart is doing as well i agree with that uh, is making it as convenient as possible for the consumer the end consumer to do something with that right because it's a pain in the butt to figure out what you can and what you can't and then if you figure out you can well you can only do it at two o'clock on a thursday at this specific recycling center or whatever it happens to be it, it, it gets to be in a, a pain in the butt right yeah. it really does and, and you know it, it, it's interesting because companies don't know or, or people don't know what is what is green or companies aren't doing a good enough job of telling people that they are green or explaining what they're doing. Yet 74% of the consumers say that it, it is very, very, very important. And it, it, it and it influences what they would buy. And, it, and they say it somewhat influences what they would buy only because they're not sure which ones are green and which ones aren't. But when they know two products, one is green and one isn't, they buy the green one and they will pay more for it. Yeah. As well. I mean, that's a really good point. Um, and my thought is like, you know, our brand's really educating consumers on like, oh, like we reduced, you know, the plastic we use. I know some of the bigger brands will, they'll, they'll kind of advertise it, right? Oh, we reduced the plastic by 15% in our bottle. Or, you know, we switched from this to this material to, you know, be offset or whatever it is, you know, there's, that's great, <laughs> you know, but how do we continue continue to do that you know it's like even with the packaging the brown box package it's like you know could you remove you know someone i was talking to recently they have a case pack for a product that sits on the shelf okay. typically what they would do is they would take that case pack and they would put four of those into a master box mm -hmm. what they found out and what they tested was increasing the is an sbs material so it's basically just a sheet uh you know paperboard mm -hmm. um so this paperboard cardstock material, you know, um, they increased the board from like 12 to 18 point and they removed the shipper. They were actually able to remove the shipper so that they can ship those on a pallet without a shipper to the stores. So oh, wow. not only are they being more sustainable, but they're saving money. So like to me, like sustainability is beneficial for everybody because it can save you money. Like oh, I'm looking at it from that perspective. So they spent a little bit more on their their other packaging, right? Because right. it's up a little bit, so it's it's fractional. But then they were able to remove a, 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 an entire box, an entire inventory item, something that they may have had to store. So now that's back in the system, you know? And so like those little tweaks are things what brands could, could and should be doing, at least in my perspective, is like, if you can, and if you have the, you know, the budgets for it, go back and reevaluate your packaging if you can, right? Like, it, it doesn't have to be complicated. You start with one box and you move on to the next box. I mean, I think there's some really good examples of brands doing that, um, specifically for uh, Amazon, and like some of their SIOC requirements and, you know, their uh, frustration-free packaging, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. move as much from this as possible. And I mean, they're driving that. Now they're just trying to figure out how to do that at the store level because, store level has been all about branding and experience right just like if you were to go to like I mean, I think I yes no no you're no i i, I agree with you 100 right? like, box really need to be that big no D no <laughs> no it doesn't or it doesn't need to be metallic print on it which kills sustainability on a, on a lot of things or right or recyclability I, <laughs> or you know there's metallic, so many different well, they spent years and so many millions of dollars studying how the consumer reacts right i heard you know like coca-cola you know i heard you hear these things that you know they figured out that when you walk down a not that they're doing bad things they're actually trying to be sustainable and i applaud what they did with with uh with sprite right making it clear instead of green the plastics awesome stuff but in the marketing like they know when you walk down an aisle within three seconds you've already your eyes already picked out what you're going to buy because of the packaging that's on there right and if we get a, a, above that and live what i like to call intentionally 
and kind of look and go, okay, wait a minute, this one looks pretty, but this is actually the one I want to buy because I'm using my brain <laughs> and intelligence and living well, it. Really. It does come down to consumers. I mean, that's, you know, it, you, you have the choice to buy certain things. Now, obviously brands have the choice to deliver certain products. So there's, there's gotta be accountability, <laughs> but you know, it's all, I think, as we learn more, it's hindsight's yeah. twenty twenty, right? Like, oh sure, sure. You know, so. Sure. But you can use that hindsight. You can use that hindsight to move. You know, you can use that hindsight to move forward, though, right? So I'm in. An, I'm, I'm looking at an article. It's called uh, the article Store Brands. Uh, it's from storebrands.com, right? And the article, and I'll put up the link to it. Is it, the, and, the, and the article is uh, sustainability continues to attract customers, right? And that, and again. They, they, they echo 74% of consumers say it's very, very important, right? And half the consumers are choosing products that are more sustainable than they did just 12 months ago. All right. 50% are choosing more than just 12 months ago. And, and sustainability it, could mean made in the right. USA. Oh, <laughs> that, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely. And a lot of times it does. It, right. It does. It's, it's here instead of abroad because it's just. But here, here's here's an interesting thing, uh, Joshua. Sustainably, uh, uh, sustainable products grow 2.7 times faster in their categories. So, sustainably marketed products, right, grew 2.7 times faster than conventionally marketed products, and almost uh, t almost twice as fast. A little over just just above twice as fast as uh, the total market. So just just crushing it. Uh, and why wouldn't you do that stuff? I mean, even the packaging, because I don't think some people don't, they don't advertise as sustainable because their product's sustainable, but a lot of products are just not going to be sustainable or a lot of products actually are sustainable. I mean, a wrench is actually sustainable. <laughs> you can turn it into a wrench a thousand times. It's always going to become a wrench again, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just about consumption. I think really... It starts about how much are we, how, what's our understanding of consumption? Do we really need to have, buy an individual can or do, can we buy, you know, a two liter or can we make it ourselves? Like there, there are literally people that are buying, you know, soda, home soda makers, so they don't have to buy any more bottles. They have one bottle and they, re, they refill it every single morning, you know? So I, that's like, what, you know, I'm going to tell you what. The way just, we consume and too. And so too. once we change the way we consume, it will change the behavior of these brands and these retailers and the things that they do too. But again, it all, I believe that it's more of a top down versus a bottom up. You know, they're not responding to us. They're telling us how they want things to go. Yeah, they no, know, you're absolutely right. That's how it's been in the past. Now there are yeah. newer brands that are coming up that are listening, right? Like that's a part of sales. I always talk, think about that is like, you have to listen to your consumer to actually give them what they want. So again, you know, hats off to these bigger you know cpg brands that are making those changes because that's not an easy feat that's not a cheap thing to do either you know like no. i was just reading an article totally separate from what we're talking about the, you know a brand spent a hundred million dollars just to switch their logo you know 50 million dollars just to switch yeah. their logo just to switch a logo yeah imagine what it would be to switch how their product is manufactured the tooling and the the overhead and the work that goes into that for one product, and maybe they have 200 products. Wow. The type of money, you know what I mean? Like when you start doing the work back, you're like, no wonder they're, they're resistant to this because it's going to cost that money. Million million to change a logo to buy their product when 74% of the people would buy it if it were more sustainable. You know how much it costs to put a micro recycling plant at say a Walmart that would recycle a hundred percent of all plastics that a consumer brought in and just dump there and, and let them recycle it. $75,000. So 150 million versus 75 grand. I, I, <laughs> you do the math, Joshua. It seems like a good deal to me <laughs> to, to be sustainable. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not, uh, I don't sit on those boards. I don't sit, <laughs> you know, on those, this decision making uh, platforms, but I think that you know everyone has a choice. So, you know, yeah, have, absolutely. As, as a Bay Cities employee owner, we have a choice to be sustainable every day, and we choose that. 
And you guys do it. I agree with you. It's top down. It's listen to the people. They're telling you what they want. You can see it right there. It's 74%. You'd say in over the, even just in the last eight years, you would imagine that everybody was just like, no, they're not sustainable over the last eight years. And they're growing more and more and more. And people who want to do that, Joshua, you've been so gracious to be on the show today. Where, where, how do they get in touch with you to find out, hey, I need to package myself sustainably and stop, uh, you know, screwing up the planet? Yeah, um, you can find me on LinkedIn at uh, Joshua Linden. Um, that's, that's the best place. You can email me at Joshua L at Um Yeah, man, I'm always available to have these types of conversations. I love packaging and displays. I uh, love just the retail environment and just thinking about how, uh, you know, consumers, marketing, like all of it. I mean, it's all important. You know, it's all a part of the, the, the selling process of those products. So I think that you know, the more we know, the more we're educated, the better, because then we can challenge those those big companies, you know, because if no one challenges them, they're never going to change. Right. No. Or those companies that aren't doing sustainable practices. Right. Like there's only yeah. one way we're going to change. And that's either us to challenge them, you know, and put them out of business because no one's going to buy their products. Right. Or right. We, we more people change or start new companies. You know, and I think that that's what we're going to see is a lot more companies starting from scratch, being more sustainable from the start. And, you know, with that, in, you know, with that intention, with, you know, the, with the end in mind, right, of how do we make sure we stay on this planet as long as we can, um, you know. So. Oh, you're absolutely right. And and I'll tell you what, that I, I when I research and I talk uh, uh, people to, to talk on the show, to speak on the show, it is it is. Um, mostly, not all, but it is mostly entrepreneurs, new entrepreneurs uh, and new companies. And they're kicking ass as far as their growth and their sales. And they're, and, and they're sustainable. They're proven that you can do this and make money. The, the, it's too costly to use your sustainable products or recycling. Baloney. It's not true. Not true at all. You just have to do it. You just have to start doing it. I, that, that's awesome stuff. I appreciate it so much, Josh. We'll have you on again. We'll talk some more in the near future. I'm sure we will. Hey, everybody, check out Bay Cities. And it's Joshua L. or Joshua Linden on uh, LinkedIn. I found them. If I can find them, you can find them as well. Check them out. And if you need, if you got packages and you want to uh, do it uh, sustainably, he's your man. Give him a call. Thanks for listening.